This is my 1994 Olivetti Philos 486 laptop. It's a machine that holds the distinction of being the first PC that I ever bought for myself back in the 90s, and it's something that I'd love to play around with more if it weren't for the fact that I'm petrified of actually using it. The problem is that in spite of a lot of searching, I've been unable to lay my hands on any recovery media for this device. And while I'm sure I could cobble together a working Windows 3.1 installation, I'd be missing the valuable software manuals and the specific drivers for the Windows Sound System sound card. As amazing as it might seem, this particular example still has all that original content installed. Before it came to me, it sat in a desk drawer for 22 years, so there's every chance this could be the original Windows installation from when the machine left the factory. So I'm reluctant to do anything with this machine because any changes I might make have the potential to cause a loss for that information, and it's incredibly valuable. The problem is, how exactly do I get this information off the machine? I'm not exactly spoiled for choice when it comes to transfer options. There's no modem, no ethernet card, and the only removable media is a floppy disk. And given that this hard disk has over 100 megabytes of data installed, it would be a long old slog to back it up fully that way. That's where this comes in. Anyone who worked in IT in the 90s will be aware of Laplink. It was a series of applications designed to allow file transfer between two PCs, originally via a null modem cable and then in later versions via modem, ethernet, USB and even infrared if your laptop had the port. This version from 1999 also added a whole bunch of additional functionality which allowed not only the transfer of data between devices, but also data to be seamlessly synchronised whenever a connection was established. It also included a text and voice chat tool, and could even allow remote control of other computers with the software installed. Not that I need to use any of that additional functionality with this machine, but the reason I went for this version is because it supports operating systems from Windows 3.1, which my Olivetti runs, all the way up to Windows 2000, which brings me to the machine I'm going to use to back this machine up. This is an HP Elite Desk PC from 2016. It has an Intel Core i5-4570 CPU, 16GB of RAM and a 512GB SSD. And a serial port. It's a machine I use for development work and it's super versatile given that it also has an optical drive and this multi-format card reader installed. Unfortunately it also runs Windows 10, so the only way I'm going to be able to use it with Laplink is if I virtualize a Windows 2000 environment. Thankfully, this is really easy to do with VirtualBox, and I can even map the PC's physical serial port and optical drive so that they can be directly accessed by the virtual machine. By doing this, I can easily install the Laplink implication on the machine. Installing the Windows 3.1 version on the laptop was a little more involved. I had to first copy the contents of a folder on the CD onto two floppy disks and then use these to install the 16-bit version of the application. Once this was done though, it was simply a case of connecting the two PCs together via the included serial cable, and then configuring both clients to expect a connection over the COM port. Once you've done that, it's just a case of initiating a connection from one of the PCs, and you'll then get side-by-side -side windows representing the disk structure of each machine. Here you can see the Windows 2000 host drive on the left and the Olivetti laptop on the right. Then it's just a case of dragging and dropping files between the two. So in my case, I just created a folder called Backup on my VM and then copied everything over. I did find that if I tried to copy everything over in one go, I would invariably get some sort of connection error at some point. This didn't happen when I connected the laptop to my Pentium Pro machine, so I can only assume it's an issue with adding the additional virtualization step. I would have just transferred everything to my Pentium Pro, but I realised halfway through that I didn't have any means of getting data off that machine either, so it was kind of a pointless endeavour. To get round this problem, I resolved to just transferring a couple of directories at a time, and eventually I had the entire C drive backed up. This was by no means a quick act, and in fact it took a total of around 12 hours at speeds of around 40 kilobytes per second to back up the whole thing. But now what? All I've done is copy the data to a Windows 2000 virtual machine. I still can't do anything with it, right? Well, not quite. 
You see, VirtualBox allows you to create a shared folder on the host machine and have it be accessible to the guest OS. In this case, the folder appears as a network drive within Windows 2000, so it was just a case of transferring the data to this folder, and voila, it's now available from Windows 10. From there, I just needed to back it up to a USB stick, which only took a few seconds compared to the many hours it took to back up from the laptop via the serial cable. It really is testament to how far we've come in terms of data transfer rates. These days, we can easily move gigabytes of data around easily on tiny devices we carry in our pockets. It really makes you think. Anyway, I'm now free to do whatever the hell I feel like with this laptop, content in the knowledge that I have a backup of the original hard disk contents should I mess up too badly. Maybe a clean install of Windows 95 is in order, or maybe, hmm, just maybe. Well, it's food for thought. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave a like and consider subscribing to see more content like this. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, bye bye.